someone has gotten an awesome new Street Fighter poster. So as you can see, I had to rearrange a few of the things on my wall. I got that awesome Street Fighter poster directly behind me at Six Flags. Mary, I think it's really cool that you were talking about conspiracies. Uh, I think Dan Brown spoke about conspiracies recently as well. So I went around the apartment to see if anything was weird, if anything was like conspiratorial going on in my apartment. And that something led me to come up with a very interesting theory. But we must start off from the beginning. I was looking where we keep the bread, because we keep the bread all in the same place. And I noticed that we had weenie rolls. Now, I know that a lot of you are like, okay, Frank Fruiter rolls, yeah, so what? But I took a more discerning eye towards these hot dog rolls. And I noticed that they came in packs of eight. And then, when I looked at the actual hot dogs, they came in packs of ten. Why do they do that? It's a conspiracy, I believe. Because you would have to buy four packs of hot dogs, 20 hot dogs, and five packs of hot dog rolls, that's a uh, 20 hot dog rolls, to have one uh, roll per wiener. Why do they do that? Is it so that you buy more? I don't really know. If anything, I think it should be the other way around. There should be more hot dog rolls in a pack than there are hot dogs in a pack. And the reason for that is uh, hot dog rolls are more universal. I mean, you could take a roll and make like a meatball sandwich out of it, right? Or you don't necessarily have to use it for hot dogs. You can use it for sausages. Or maybe you want to put uh, a shish kebab type thing on a roll. You know what I'm saying? So the hot dog buns, um, at least in my opinion, should at least be equal to the amount of wieners that come in a package. Or more than the amount of wieners that come in a package. But no, instead they come less than the amount of wieners that come in a package. And so, if you go out and buy one package of wieners and one package of buns, what you're going to end up with is two wieners without buns. Now, how are you going to eat a hot dog without a bun? I mean, you're going to put the ketchup on it, it's just going to roll on the sides because the hot dog is like, the shape is cylindrical. You can't put beans on, on top of it or, or sauerkraut or onions or anything because it's just going to roll on the sides. It's, 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 it's going to be way too messy. You can't do that. You can't have an excess amount of wieners. You need to have either an equal amount of wieners to buns or a greater amount of buns than wieners. You can't have bunless wieners. And so I thought this was a conspiracy by the buns guys, by the Frank Food guys, to try to get everybody to uh, buy more than what they need. Like I said, you would need to buy 20 uh, wieners and 20 buns for there to be an equal amount. And this conspiracy sort of led me to JM's theory of wieners and buns. And this theory is that if you have an event where you have more wieners than buns, someone's not going to have a good time. But to truly see this theory in action, we have to go back to a fictional time in history. A time when all the guys used to get rounded up and bring together their wieners and start cooking them on the grill outside with barbecue sauce and all types of other stuff that you would put on a wiener. And what the guys ended up with, what they realized they ended up with, sausage fest. Because all the guys were together, there were no buns there for their wieners. So one guy calls up his girlfriend and says, Honey, can you bring over some buns? And then another guy calls up uh, his wife and says, Listen, uh, we need a bit of beer here. We're all like hanging out and we need some beer. And can you bring some friends? And one guy calls up his sister and he says, Hey, can you bring over your friends and some of uh, buns as well? Because we have a lot of wieners here and we just need more buns. And another dude, this one perhaps has a beard, calls up his ex girlfriend and he says, Hey, I really need some ketchup here. Him and his ex girlfriend are still friends. Okay, no, it's not weird. So when all these girls come with their hot dog buns and their beer and their ketchup, what you've essentially done is turned a sausage fest into a barbecue. And that was the first case and example of JM's theory of buns and wieners. Thank you, Mary, for that conspiracy video. It was very, very awesome. Aaron, you had made a video where you were out and collecting blueberries. And I thought that was completely awesome. It actually brought me back a few years when I was working... Uh, at Harvard Forest, which is a research facility in Petersham, Massachusetts. 
what I was doing there was I was doing uh, research on carnivorous plants. Nothing too exciting. But yeah, also in the bogs of Petersham, Massachusetts, there grow cranberries. So what I would do is I'd like, it was a kind of big bog where isolated islands of sphagnum moss interdispersed by uh, water because the water there was dammed up by a beaver. And that dam was like, and the water area was becoming a bog. So what I would do is I'd go out on a canoe, I'd canoe around, I'd do my research, and then, oh, look, there's a blueberry bush. Grab some blueberries. And then I'd canoe some more, go to the next island, do some research. Oh, look, there's some cranberries. Oh, my God, I love them. I ate so many of them. It's like they weren't even washed. I just ate them. It could have been spiders. Josh, so you said that you're going through court cases, and I always found court cases interesting because... Uh, I like to play devil's advocate, so I choose the less popular position and try to defend it as best as I can in the court case. And I just love to argue, and I think that if you, like, present us court cases, interesting court cases, it'll be cool, because then we can, like, talk about it and stuff, and, like, it'll be awesome. I have a sister. She works in a cell phone store. She got me this awesome cell phone. But yes, siblings can also lead to circumstances that are beyond my control. I have a younger sister. She's two years younger than me. She's 22. She lives by herself about four or five blocks away from me. And she comes uh, once in a while for dinner and stuff like that to visit mom. So my sister came one day and she got dressed in my room because she was going somewhere after. But she left the clothes that she took off in my room. And then the day after, like I didn't notice that the clothes were there. But the day after, my girlfriend comes and she's like, what are these girls clothes doing in your room? And that was awkward. Okay, guys, I know a lot of you have been getting orchids. Very, very, very cool. I'm going to drop some quick knowledge here at the end of the video for you. Generally speaking, this is the type of orchid you're getting. It has these types of leaves that are flat and very broad. One thing you want to remember, when you water the orchid, never water it right here. These are where the new leaves come out. And it is susceptible to something called leaf rot. If you get water right here in the middle of the crown of the plant, Lift it upside down and try to, oh my god, lift it upside down and try to empty out that water because it doesn't like water there. So how do you water it? You don't want to spray the whole plant. They don't like that. What you want to do is water the base. Um, try not to keep it in a tray. They don't like to be waterlogged. And the roots are also susceptible to something called root rot. They have these big, fleshy, greenish, white roots. These are like popping out because this plant is very, very healthy. And they are susceptible to rotting easy. What does this mean? You don't want to keep it in a tray full of water. That's not good. About half a cup to one cup of water a week would be more than enough for this plant. Let it drain well and then just put it back. One more thing. All of the orchids that I've seen you guys get are miniature phalaenopsis like this. What it is is a hybrid between two phalaenopsis. Most phalaenopsis are very, very, very big. As a matter of fact, let me show you a normal phalaenopsis. This is a normal phalaenopsis. Compare. Okay, you see how this one's mini and this one's big? Yeah. What happens is miniature Phalaenopsis are hybrid plants. They're hybrid between Phalaenopsis pulcherima and some other Phalaenopsis species. I actually have the species Phalaenopsis pulcherima right here. It's a very, very small Phalaenopsis. Compare between the miniature Phalaenopsis and Phalaenopsis pulcherima. Phalaenopsis pulcherima is a species. This is a hybrid. The hybrids are very easy to grow and so they're found in a lot of Home Depots. They're mass-produced plants. Few more things about phalaenopsis they grow as epiphytes cling to the side of trees so probably yours are growing in tree bark or some kind of moss they really like that um if you're going to repot it don't ever use potting soil very bad and as for light they do not need a lot of light direct sunlight is extremely bad it will burn the leaves off no direct sunlight they are the perfect house plants because this artificial light you get in your house is just the right amount for them. If you want to keep them near a window, that's okay, but not on the windowsill. Don't keep them on the windowsill. That's too much light. These guys grow on the barks of the trees. Mainly can be found where a stem meets the trunk meets the trunk of the tree. The plant can be found growing like this, with its roots clinging on to the tree. Also, because the plant grows like this sideways, not like this straight up. When it rains, rain has never doesn't have a chance to collect right here. And because it grows um, where the stem meets the trunk, there's a lot of leaf cover blocking the sunlight. So again, no direct sunlight. If you give it direct sunlight, if you water the crown, if you overwater it, if you keep it waterlogged in a tray of water all the time, these are all very bad things that will kill your plant. So this is not a tutorial for how to grow it, but a tutorial for how not to kill it. So for any of you looking to get another orchid or your first orchid, 
uh, Phalaenopsis miniature Phalaenopsis they're all very easy to grow and they're recommended for beginners. If you have any questions on the Street Fighter poster I have back there on jams, theories of buns and wieners, on my research in Petersham, Massachusetts, or on orchids, just write them down in the comment section and I'm going to answer them because I'm awesome. Well, I have so many things written down that I can't get through all of them. Okay, um, so show the buns. Yeah, I, guys, I showed you the buns, but unfortunately, I don't have a wiener to show you. I mean, I, I do have a wiener, but it's in my... I can't show you. It's in my pants.